I'm very excited to be here, man. It's a dream come true. You know, the work aside, uh, Coach Diaz, Coach T. Will, Coach, uh, Coach T. Rob, Coach Jeff Simpson, all these guys, man. Learn from these guys is a huge blessing. I'm ready for it. Awesome. Coach, we're going to start with Gary Furman from Kane Sport. Gary, go ahead. Hey, DVD, congrats, man. I know that this is something you've looked forward to for a long time. Uh, talk a little, can you elaborate a little more about that? You know, just like what it means to you to be able to become a, a, a position coach at the U and, um, you know, take that next step in your career and, and what you feel that you can bring, you know, to the table. I, I know you're, you're extremely close with, with Mike and I'm sure there's a little bit bittersweet feelings there, but, you know, what, what do you feel that you can bring to the table? Uh, as the cornerbacks coach? Oh, it, it's a exciting uh, to be a part of this program. You know, when I first got into coaching um, back, back at ASA, my dream was always become a, a, a coach at Miami. And uh, I think I could bring a lot to the table, you know, just uh, my knowledge of the game. I played, you know, this game a long time. And uh, this, you know, like I said, relationship with the kids in the community, uh, the recruits, everything. And uh, like you said, it's a bittersweet. But, you know, I'm always, you know, Coach, coach uh, Mike Rump, a lot of things. You know, he's like a big brother to me. You know, he kind of helped me out when I was training for the draft and I was coming up. Uh, so I'm also, I'm always leaning on uh, Rob. He always, he always gave me advice on things uh, to this day. So like you said, it's better but you know, he always, he get, he, when I, I talked to him about the job. He told me uh, he's excited for me and everything like that. So there's no love lost. Coach, we're going to go to Manny Navarro at The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Hey, DVD. Congrats again, man, on, uh, on getting this job. Um, I'm curious from, uh, you know, You've seen a guy like T-Rob have so much success recruiting in the past. You're getting to work with him hand in hand. What are, what are maybe you hoping to learn from him as, as just a guy who's had so much, so much success recruiting? And I guess what's the biggest difference for you now being able to actually go on the road and not just be, you know, at UM kind of recruiting guys, texting guys, just the advantage of being able to actually go out and so forth? Um, I think, you know, the biggest thing that T-Rob has shown me, what I've, what I've learned about T-Rob is that, you know he's all he's he's a great recruiter, but he's also a great coach. And his his um his records his track record speaks for itself. You know, I was just speaking to him yesterday. He got a lot of guys that was in the first that, that was drafted first round, second round. He had, probably have two guys drafted this year that go probably first second round. Uh, J C Horn and uh, the other kid number twenty four. So that's just a big thing. And you know that his his development the players is kind of helping him recruit also. And he's a just a, a personable guy. You know, straight shooter, real real funny guy. And uh, I'm definitely gonna lean him a lot. Lean on him a lot this year, also in that in that aspect, and um, that's about it, man. Coach, we got David Ferrones from the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, DVD, congratulations. Um, uh, I guess now in this new role, you'll now be more hands-on with the development aspect of the current cornerbacks, and not just you know recruiting them to, to come in. I uh, wanted to know your evaluation of uh, your current cornerbacks uh, from top to bottom, including Tyreek Stevenson, uh, the big addition, and. Um, just how much does it help also having already known them being around the program and uh, now picking up on in this as aspect of coaching? Uh, man, it's a, it's a great group. I mean, um, from top to bottom, I think, you know, DJ Ivy is a great guy. Just watching the, the film from last year, man, he's a, a kid that got long arms, man, a good technique at the line of scrimmage, uh, great technique. Uh, to Corey Couch, is, uh, you know, he, he got the nickname the Chihuahua. Well, I think the kid is like the – the pit bull, really, because he he's not he's not scared to put his face in the fan. You know he's he's tough, um, good ball skills, good technique at the line of scrimmage. Um, got Al Blades, who was a good football player, also great great technique, good ball skills. Um, and we got the two young guys, uh, Isaiah Dunson and Marcus Clark, who who played a lot. You know this they didn't fail out last year, but you know just watching the guys in the practice, they showed a lot of things. You know Isaiah's a long kid from Georgia, he's very fast. Um, Good uh, change direction, and uh, he's he's not afraid to put his face in fan. Also, and Marcus Clark, the former receiver, we made it to DB this year. He got a great ball skills, and he's he kind of you know is a, I think he's probably one of the, probably the top two fast the DBs on our team, and I'm excited for him also. Coach, we've got Brandon Adoy from Football Hotbed. Brandon, go ahead. Coach, uh, congratulations again. Uh, long time coming, and. Uh, so I'm just curious, you talked about your community um, ties yeah. and all of those, and we're familiar with that. How have you, in getting together with T-Rob and T-Will, how have you spent the first couple of days in this role? And you guys are all known for recruiting, great developers as well. But I think the excitement around all of you guys and kind of all coming at the same time is that the elite recruiting levels that you guys are expected to be at 
you know, has everybody just like, you know, kind of sitting on the edge of their seat. So I just want to know how have you guys collectively spent the first several days when you've gotten a chance to kind of talk to these 22s and, and reach out and, and start kind of building that juggernaut of a recruiting class, you know, that you're expected to have moving forward? Well, basically, man, you know, we, um, we kind of like, you know, when me and Rob got here first, you know, we basically just sat down and watched all the guys from South Florida, all, all the Chris Carter to California, just watched the top guys and pretty much trying to see what we need to make the program better. And you know, when T. Will came, we did the same thing for the linebackers. And um, like you say, you know, this is the, pretty much the relationship we got. We, we talk, we're starting to build with these kids. Basically, you know, great kids will play with great kids, you know. Just like last year's class, you know, James Williams and LT was the, the headliners of our class. When we got those two guys committed, it started, all the pieces started falling, uh, falling after them. I think we just got this, 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 this start, start getting the, the kids that you know that's the great kids, you know, the great character kid, the kid that fit our program. And that would just pretty much, you know, have everybody follow them after that. You know, if you get a guy like, you know, like, like, like I said, James Williams, he pretty much, once you got him, he just started, like, falling into place. So I think once we start doing that in this class, everything would be okay. Coach, we've got time for a few more. We're going to go to David Lake at 24-7. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, wanted to ask you about – so Manny Diaz used the phrasing of the reason why he thought you'd be a good fit at cornerbacks coach is because you might be able to improve on the nuances of, of closing on, on the recruiting trail. I guess just what does that mean to you? And what, I guess, what, uh, what do you feel like it takes to be good at, at closing the top recruits? What do you have to do to get that done? Hey, I got I got a, I got a picture of me and you, man, for my freshman year. I got I got to send it to you at the banquet, bro. I got to send it. It's crazy. I got to send it to you, bro. But um, I think you know it, that, it means a lot that Coach Diaz think highly of me like that. Um, but I think it all started, you know, this relationship with the, with the kids and their parents, you know. But I, mainly the parents, because in the day, you know, like my recruit, my mom would have to find a say so. You know, I can say I'm gonna go to X, Y, and Z, and everything else, but my mom had to find a say so. I think this relationship with the parents and making sure, like, hey, look. I'm going to take care of your son, you know, I'm going to make sure your son will leave here with a degree and an NFL contract. Because the parent, they, the parents care about academics more than anything. They don't care. They put they care play a lick of football. They care about the academics. Once you pretty much instill that in them, everything else is like pretty much easy peasy. DVD, we got two more for you. We're going to go to Chris Stock at Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, obviously a lot is made of, you know, your time at UM and local in the community. I was curious about your NFL experience. Um, guys asking you about that or what's maybe the biggest thing as a coach, as a guy that played in the NFL that you can tell the players as they try to reach that goal? Um, yeah, I get a lot of questions like from my players about, you know, just how the NFL and, and just football questions. But uh, mainly I tell a lot of guys, man, you know, special teams to keep. You know, everybody's not going to be a first-round draft pick or a second-round draft pick. You know, you got to have guys that pretty much, you know, special teams and, and have their earn your right on the field. And that's how what I, what I was talking to the freshmen about, you know, Isaiah, and Marcus Clark yesterday, like, look, you guys are freshmen. You know, back then, freshmen redshirted. You didn't, you didn't play. So the way you're going to feel the special team. So that's why I try to, like, you know, I get a bunch of questions, you know, things like that. And I try to tell these guys, look, man, you know, to get to the next level, you got to put in the work on off the field. And uh, I think I think I'm um, – I think it's, it's, it's paying off what, what I'm saying because I see a lot of guys doing extra work now. So hopefully, man, it, it shows in the field in, in the fall. All right, I lied, Coach. We've got two more for you. Susan Miller-Degnan from the Miami Herald first. Susan, go ahead. Hey, DeMarcus. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, how different is it relating to Manny Diaz as a head coach now that you're on the, you know, technically on the coaching staff as opposed to the recruiting realm? Um, you know, what's he like uh, for you? And I know, I guess your head coach was Randy Shannon, right, when you were there? Yeah. Yeah, and obviously a defensive guy also, but. You know. Oh, so you 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 like you comparing the two? Well, you can compare the two if you want, and also just what what man is like now that you're on the staff. Oh, uh, it oh, um, me being on the staff, it's, I, I think it's still the same. You know, from when I was just a, a QC, Coach D has always been. A, he's always the same guy. You know, respectful guy. He treats everybody the same, down from the custodian all the way to the the AD. He's he's a respectful guy. I mean, you know. Um, he respect everybody in the building, and he respect everybody to do their job at the high level. So I don't think anything changed. You know, I think he just, you know, I think for me, I'd have to pretty much try to do extra just to pretty much to pull my weight around here. And I think, you know, as um, 
uh, comparing the two, it's, it's hard. You know, they're two two different guys. You know, they, like you said, they both they both uh, fits coaches, but two different guys in the same in their in their own right. Thanks. Awesome. Last one for you, Coach. We have Gabby Urutia from Twenty Four Seven. Gabby, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Congratulations. Um, I just wanted to ask you. You know, just watching tape, evaluating tape. What are some of the things you're kind of looking for in in your cornerbacks? Just kind of get a better idea of some of the things that you're looking for just from watching the tape of these. You know, twenty twenty twos and twenty twenty threes. Say that again? Yeah, just uh, just some of the things that you're looking for in your cornerbacks when you're watching the tape of, some, of like the 2022s, 2023s, just some of the things you're kind of looking for uh, specifically, you know, just in cornerbacks that you kind of like. Okay, well, um, I look for, like, you know, guys who are going to have, have that square guy that who are going to play with no that with no no type of fear. You know, as cornerbacks, you're going to get beat, but it's all about the next play. You know, when I was in the crew department, I, did, I, didn't really, I, didn't, I didn't watch highlights a lot. I kind of watched the game film so I can see how the guy plays like different, like in between play things like that, but um, I'm looking for guys who gonna who gonna have like you know when they get an interception they 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 looking to score, guys who not who not afraid to tackle, um, and just game changers you know um, like we we need game changers. Awesome. Coach, thank you for spending a few minutes with us today, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you soon. Oh no problem. All right, you guys.